Hello and welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. I'm just backfilling this trench. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I'm converting that garage behind me into guest accommodation for my cottage. There's going to be a bedroom, an office, a bathroom. And the electric into the garage wasn't quite powerful enough, so my electrician told me that it had to be upgraded. But I wanted to do a lot of the work myself, number one, to save money, and number two, to show you in video. So I got instructions from the electrician on how to do this. So what I'm doing in this video is two regulations, but I can't sign it off, obviously, because my electrician has to sign it off. So every stage of this process, he's okayed. So when you're laying an electric cable in a trench, the first thing is you've got to get the depth right. It's got to be 60 centimetres or two feet in old money. So what I did was I created a little measure. Now I have put some sand in the bottom of this trench, so it's not quite as deep as it was, but we'll come to that in a minute. That measure is two feet below the bar, so I use that as a measure just to make sure that I had the right depth. Then the cable has to be laid in a bed of sand four inches of sand and you lay the cable in that sand to protect the cable from stones so I have my cable in that trench in about four inches of sand and then you have to put this tape on top you can see it at the far end there to my left and it's a warning tape and it goes on top of where the cable is so that if anyone in the future digs down they'll find that tape before they find the cable now I have also put some category 6 cable in this trench because I want the internet in that garage too so I'm going to also share some little tips that I've learned in the process of doing this now I've put three runs of category 6 in from the cottage to the garage and the reason I've done three runs is because if one of them fails I'll have an insurance policy it's not that expensive and I can afford to put three lines of that um, cable down and so that if one of my internet cables fails I've got another two to fall back on and it saves me having to dig this trench again so just to recap I made a tool for measuring the depth and then I put sand in the bottom put the cables in put sand on top of the cables and now I'm backfilling it with the soil and any large boulders or bricks that I come across when I'm backfilling I'm going to take out because I don't want sharp edges to risk penetrating the cable that's in the trench below. Now I've bought this tool, it's like a large show, it's coming really handy. I've used this for both breaking through the surface and also as you can see now I'm using it for dragging the soil back into the trench. It's a really satisfying feeling doing this. Another tip was I scrape the gravel to this side on my drive to keep the gravel clean because I want to reuse it when I've backfilled the, the trench. And on that side, where I pile the soil, I use some weed fabric to keep the, the gravel there quite clean. And so hopefully, uh, by the time I get this backfilled and the gravel put back on top, you won't be able to see where I've been. That's the theory anyway. Now. When you're measuring the cable, I think it's a wise idea to measure it a lot longer. Because once that cable's buried, there's no chance of you changing the length of it or pulling it one way or another. So I've got plenty of spare at the far end and plenty of spare at that end too. And the same is true of my internet cables. Now, the internet cables, when I put them in, one of them had an ethernet connection um, thing on the end oh, and I think it's a good idea to protect that with some tape so you don't get soil into the workings of it that's another little tip right let's get on with this now I've been using hand tools to do this job my long handle ivory spade has been brilliant my large hoe has also been useful and I did use a, a standard garden spade as well you can get trench digging spades but I didn't use one of those I just used a normal spade now I could have got a mini digger, in fact, until very recently, my next door neighbor had a mini digger and he did offer to help me do this. But the problem I've got here is because I live in a 400 year old house, 
There's a lot of history buried in my garden. And that history includes pipes and wires. And I didn't want to do any damage. So I decided to tackle this job by hand. And I'm glad I did because in the course of digging this whole trench, I found electric cables, which are still alive, water pipes, which are still alive, and also clay pipes, which I think has something to do with land drainage. Had I used a mini digger, I'd have gone straight through them. The point I'm making is, whenever you start digging a trench, always be mindful, always keep in mind and be aware that there might be something under the ground that you don't want to damage. So don't go at it with a pickaxe, because you could very easily go through a clay pipe or even a gas main. Imagine that. So I suppose another question that you might want answering if you're about to put an electric cable in the ground is how big does that cable have to be? What grade does it have to be? Well, my answer to that is I don't know. I'm not qualified to make that decision. I do know what I'm having in the garage. I'm having some outside lights, some heaters, some electric heaters. It's all going to be electric. An electric boiler for the water and lots of plug sockets. I want more plug sockets than I need in there. So I told my electrician what I needed and he was the one that made the decision about the size of the cable. He was the one that told me that the cable that's already there isn't going to cut it, it's not big enough, and therefore I needed a new one. And that's why I've had to do this, this job. But the nice thing about doing this job is I've learned a lot from it and I'll get sign off from a qualified electrician so that if I ever decide to sell the house, I will have sign off, so I'm adding value. And also, I'll know that it's safe. So when it comes to decisions, like how big does the cable have to be? Leave them to a qualified electrician. My electrician has been brilliant. He's been more than happy to let me do the work, which I suppose saves him doing the work and also saves me money. But along the way, he's also been very helpful with advice on what to do next. So I really do appreciate your help, Lee, if you're watching this. Right, so let's get on with this digging. Now I'm really looking forward to getting my drive back. If you're going to dig a trench for an electrical cable and you're doing it on your own, don't break your back, don't injure yourself. Do it like I did, do it over a period of days or even weeks. But what I would say is don't leave it too long because if you dig in a deep trench and you leave it too long and you have any significant weather, they can collapse and you'll end up doing the work twice and I did have that so try and do the work promptly if you possibly can now I'm doing this on a wet day uh, I'm doing it on a wet day because I've set myself a target for getting my drive back so I can put my cars over here but really obviously ideally you want to do this on a day when the soil is not completely waterlogged because it makes it a lot heavier but but also say that if the soil is a little bit damp in the first place, it's a lot easier to dig out. Can you see that robin on my spade handle? They call robins the gardener's friends because they're always there when you're digging, looking for food, obviously. And they're quite, they can become quite tame. And they're very brave. And you can even get them to the stage where they'll eat out of the palm of your hands. Now, interestingly, I've just been sent a product, which is a bird table that you put food on. And it's got a camera in it. And every time a bird lands on it, it sends me a video to my phone. of the birds feeding, um, I'll drop a little image in whilst I'm talking. But you can find all those videos on my channel. Anyway, we'll get in there. It's a lot easier putting soil back in than it is digging it out because obviously it's not hard and compacted. Now I am going to tell you something now which you're going to think is really, really obvious. And I don't mean to patronise you, but if you're going to dig a trench and leave it overnight, make sure that people know it's there and possibly even consider putting things around it to stop people wandering along and falling in it. I think you'd end up being responsible if you injured someone. But also, think about nature. Hedgehogs, 
hedgehog can fall into little trenches and can't get out. So I did leave a plank in this one for the hedgehogs to escape if they ever found themselves in the bottom of it. Because I think a two foot trench with steep sides would be too much for a hedgehog to navigate. There's another boulder. And I have got hedgehogs in my garden, I know that, and I've got them on video, a video on them, and I'll link the hedgehog video in the description box below this one, if you're interested, because uh, I'm quite into my wildlife, spent a lot of time putting in a wildlife pond and a wildlife garden. So the garage door that you can see over my left shoulder is going to be a bifold. So you'll be able to watch me have a go at installing bifold doors in the very near future. I have to say the one thing has become very, very apparent uh, because I am getting building regs approval on the garage conversion. It's all about insulation. The amount of insulation I'm putting in there, retrofitting, to keep it warm and save the environment is incredible. I'm quite relaxed about that because it'll also save me on bills. So I'm going to carry on filling this trench in now. I'm going to record it and give it you in fast forward, which will take about 15 seconds. And I'll see you in a moment to say goodbye. So one thing I'd love to say to you as you're watching me backfill this trench is that everything you see in this video, from the tools to the cable to the warning tape, is all available in my Amazon storefront. And you can find a link to that in the description box below this video. You'll also find my tips about installing a cable so you can print them off if you found, if you found this useful and if you buy things through my amazon storefront i really appreciate it because i get a small commission on every purchase and it all goes back into projects in my garden so thank you for your support so that was a good workout i won't need to go to the gym this week hope you've enjoyed it if you know you see i've put the weed fabric back on top I'm not going to put the gravel back on yet. It's a bit of a quagmire today. We've had quite a wet period, so that will settle down into that trench. It may even settle down below surface level, so I may need to add some soil, but at the moment, I'm just getting on top of it with the, the weed fabric between me and the mud. And by doing that, I'm kind of helping it to do some compact compacting don't forget to check out my bird box video. Don't forget to check out my Amazon storefront. And of course the tips for installing or burying an electric cable you'll find in the description box below this video. I'll see you soon for some more house and garden adventures. Bye for now.